What's up, my friend? I hope you're doing well today. And in today's video, I just wanted to touch on a subject that uh, I think not that many people talk about or not many people want to accept, actually. And that is why having a normal job, like a nine to five, may not actually be such a bad idea as a composer, as a musician, and so on. Um, if you think about it, right, there's a lot of people who dedicate their lives to music and that's all they do. But at the same time, if you talk to them, if you interview them, many of them hate it. They, they just can't stand it and <clears throat> they kind of wish it could all change, but they feel trapped in that because they, they've dedicated everything in their life to it and it just feels like they can't escape. So I definitely want to maybe share a different perspective, a different viewpoint on why having a, a job or a career entirely different from music altogether may be a good idea for you. So before we dive into that though, in case you're interested in potentially adding another income stream to your uh, career, um, to your life, then I want to share with you the process that I've personally been using for the past few years. And it, I, I outline everything in a clear guide called how to make money as a composer in 2020 and beyond. And it essentially, again, walks through my step-by-step -step framework of how I'm able to share value with the world for free, but also monetize the knowledge on the back end. It's super didactic, super practical. I want to put that in your hands. If you click the first link in the description box below, then uh, you'll be able to download it 100% free right away. And I hope it's valuable to you. I hope it helps you. Just so you know, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It won't happen overnight, but it's something that does take time and it uh, it allows you to build a foundation that stands very strongly over time and allows you to free up your time to do more of the things you enjoy. So I thought this was a super relevant uh, guide to give you uh, with this video today. So let's kind of dive into the topic of having a normal job, right? Again, I kind of mentioned previously, a lot of people who are working full-time in music, while they are supporting their families full time um, or supporting themselves entirely from that job, inside they feel crushed and they feel like their soul has been sucked out of them. And I think this is because at a certain point when you're making music because you have to make music, when you have certain responsibilities and deadlines to meet, the, the fun of creating music starts to slip away because more and more you you have to write music instead of you want to write music, right? And I think a lot of us get into the field of writing music or becoming a musician because we literally enjoy making music. We want to make music, right? But as soon as music starts becoming a responsibility and something we have to do, then it's very natural for music to feel like a chore and something we don't want to do because it, it starts to put pressure on us. And that sort of pressure is usually a negative pressure. You know, it can really start to build up and eventually overwhelm you. So that's my case for having a job or a career outside of music. I've actually talked with quite a few friends who are musicians, but they do it as a hobby. And so, you know, they have careers in IT, they do computer work, they do, um, they're, they're dentists, right? They're uh, working at, at restaurants, right? It doesn't really matter, but something else to take your mind entirely off of music so that when you get into the creative space for music, you associate it with good feelings, you associate it with things you enjoy, and you just have a wonderful time that's certainly productive, um, and you just enjoy the experience. So I can take myself as an example, right? Um, I don't write music full-time. My full-time gig actually is doing exactly this, making videos, making content for my YouTube channel and helping the world. Um, this is the business model that I've chosen because I can share value with the world, but also monetize my knowledge in the back end and, um, and provide access to myself to students who wanna go further with me. And this is a system that I've set up and one that I really enjoy doing because again, it's a scalable system and one that I feel good about doing. It's ethical, I can provide value to the world for free, and it just allows me to help uh, whenever possible. Now, granted, what the work that I am doing is on a day-to-day -day basis, it is consistent. It's something I have to do every day or every other day or so, except weekends. But I enjoy doing it because I'm talking about a subject that I do enjoy, and that's music in general, orchestration, composing music, also life and business and stuff like that. So it feels creatively fulfilling to be able to do this, you know? And because it's not directly related to writing music and creating ideas in, um, in, in a musical format, then it makes it easier to kind of detach the art of writing music and the art of talking about music or teaching music. It's, it's, a, it's a completely different mindset, if, if that makes sense. 
So for me, I still consider these as separate um, works or, or separate um, tasks, if you will. Because one is creating content, one is outputting to the world and sharing knowledge and education, whereas the other is more self-fulfilling, like writing music for myself. And you'll notice, like if you follow my channel for any length of time, I tend to upload my music very sporadically on my channel. But when I do upload it, I, I'm always proud of it. It's always something that I really want to share because I'm really, really happy with it and something that I really cared about and worked on. And I probably wouldn't be able to feel that way if all of my creative energy was dedicated to literally writing track after track after track on a daily, weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis, right? Because when I do write music, I feel like I can pour my soul and emotion into it and it makes that experience really, really worth it. So if you're in that situation where you're feeling maybe a little bit stuck in your nine to five job and you're wondering if you, you should transition full time into music and trying to make a living entirely off of music, I would actually dissuade you from doing that, um, at least in the beginning, because if you go all in on music and you find that it's really, really tough and it's actually harder than you imagined and it's harder to find those gigs to support yourself, then you're essentially, you've already cut off your only income stream, which is your main job, right? If you have diversified and you have additional income streams, then that's certainly a plus and that can support you as well. But if you only have that one income stream, then cutting it off doesn't really make sense to just, you know, uh, fulfill your passion of making music. For me, I think the better option is to have that job, continue to do that job, and then build up your path in music, whether you want to earn an income from it or simply do it as a hobby. If you're only going to do it for a hobby, then keeping your regular job is a no brainer. But if you want to do music as a living or at least earn additional income from it, then it makes sense to do both for an extended period of time or however long it takes to build up that music business part, you know, gain that experience, that entrepreneurship, those skills, and then gradually wean yourself off of the regular nine to five job so that you can transition naturally into the music job, the music career without feeling that pressure and that strain on either side. So I'm currently actually at the time of this recording, I'm exactly in this phase right now. So, you know, I've been doing my YouTube channel for uh, over four years now, coming up on five years. And I started my online business a little less than, um, actually a little over two years ago. And as of this taping, the online business is, has currently eclipsed the revenue of my private teaching business, which currently was at 100%. Um, but now my online business is starting to take over. And I, because I've scaled back my teaching business more and more, the proportion is now switching, right? So my online business is earning more than my teaching business. And my goal is that by the middle of next year, I can completely cut off the private teaching business and only focus on the online business. So I'm doing this slow transition over the course of a few years, but I'm encouraged and I'm excited for the future because this is a system that I've set up over the long run and I want this to work um, to allow myself to spend more time doing the things that I really enjoy doing, which is again, writing music, playing tennis, spending time with friends and family, those life-giving activities that you just can't get if you're stuck in an office working all day, every day. Everyone is different, of course. There's no right or wrong way to do this. In fact, I have some close friends who actually do thrive off the pressures of working in music full time every single day, writing for libraries, writing for um, trailer houses, whatever that may be. But, you know, when I ask them, do you have time to spend with your family? Like how, how many hours do you work a day? They typically say like, yeah, I work, you know, 18, 20 hours a day and I work from home. Um, I got my, my kids and my, my family around me. And hey, I absolutely respect that. I, I can't knock that because that's their own choice and they enjoy doing it. But I think for me, as soon as music becomes something I dread doing or something I lose excitement over, then I start to lose my sense of self. Like I don't even know where I fit anymore because writing music is the sole reason why I got into songwriting and composing in the first place was simply just because I wanted to do it, you know? So yeah. I, I don't know what you think about this and where you kind of are on, on your path at the moment, but if you could leave me a comment below and maybe let me know where you where you're feeling you are on your journey, like have you wanted or considered switching into music full time and earning an income from there? And are you feeling stuck in a nine to five job? And you know, if you're entertaining that idea, 
did the ideas in this video kind of give you some second thoughts or something else to think about? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and maybe share your experiences with me there. Um, and again, if you do just want to get started, but you want to add an additional income stream to your existing uh, life, your career, and um, support yourself in another way, have that additional stream, then I want to give you that guide called How to Make Money as a Composer in 2020 and Beyond. And this will outline the exact framework I'm, I'm using here that I've already detailed in the video I, I, that I described um, of adding value to the world, sharing your knowledge, but then also monetizing that in the back end, and then building this business that can scale in the long run and help you really free yourself up to do the work that you enjoy, but also contribute to the world and make a good living in the back end. It's a, it's a model I truly believe in. It's paying dividends for myself, and I want to give that to you as well as, you know, in however I can. So if you want to download that guide, it's absolutely free. Just click the first link in the box below, and uh, you can download it absolutely free as my gift to you. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.